want you to turn with me over to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. This is the message translation. The word of the Lord, it says, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. This translation of Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, the message translation, uh, I like this translation because it makes it very clear. It says, again, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Uh, tonight I want to talk about purpose and I want to talk about understanding that God has a purpose uh, for you. He has a purpose for, for me. Um, and I think it's important for us to stop sometimes and um, just ponder on the fact that we are here existing uh, for, on purpose and God has a purpose for us. We're not just here just trying to, you know, raise a family and pay bills and work a job and then, you know, transition over to the other side. God has purpose for us. And I think it's important for us in the times that we're living in right now for us to really understand and appreciate our value that we have in Christ Jesus. Um, we've been given a gift of life. We have been given the gift of life. And so it's important to ask yourself, why? Why am I here? Why uh, has God given me the gift of life? You know, God, what is your purpose? You know, I mean, no, God has a purpose. God does everything. Uh, with a purpose. And so he has created us with a purpose. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, again the message translation, the text says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. It says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. In other words, if you and I are going to understand our purpose and understand God's plan for us, then we're going to have to find that out through Christ because it's in him uh, that we exist. It's, it's, it's in him that we find out what it is we are supposed to do. Uh, everything started in him and everything has its purpose in him. Uh, in, in book of Acts chapter 17, the text says, and God has made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Then the text says God has made all things and he is Lord and he dwells in a temple which is not made with, with natural hands, is what the, the verse is saying. Verse 25 says, neither is worshiped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 26, the text says, it has made of one blood all nations of man for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Now this verse here is saying, in essence, God has created all men and he has decided what race a man would be. He has decided what country a man would, would be birthed in. He has decided the background of a man and he has decided the set time in which a man would be born. And so you and I, in terms of our nationality, that has been decided by God. The time in which we've been born, that has been decided by God. Uh, the country in which we've been, we were born in, that was decided by God. And our background in terms of how we was raised, that was decided by God. And then he says this, in verse 27, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. He says, so we can seek after him and find him. He says, and when we do this, he's not far from us. And then verse 28 is that great verse. He says, for in him we live and move and have our being. And so the text makes it very clear that God created us and we get our start in him and we find our purpose in him. And whoever you are tonight, God decided 
your race. He decided what country we live in. He decided what time you would be born. He decided how you would be raised. He decided all that. God made that decision. And he did so because he has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. And so the question then has to be, okay, what is that purpose and how do we tap into that purpose? And oftentimes, you know, we ask that question out loud and we might ask it to ourselves, okay, what is my purpose and what has God called me to do? And oftentimes we say, well, I don't know what God's called me to do. I don't know my purpose. And we don't really try to find that out. We don't really try to find out why God really uh, created us. And we just kind of let it sit on the shelf and we just go about living life. And many times people leave the earth never fulfilling their purpose in God. Never really finding out what it was that God created them for. And it is God's uh, will that we understand his purpose. It is God's desire that we understand his purpose. And it is God's uh, desire and will that we fulfill our purpose in the earth. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, um, uh, chapter 29, this particular story gives us uh, understanding. It gives us um, direction as to how we can understand God's purpose for our life, how we can understand his plan for our life. It's very clear. Uh, it's very straightforward. And it will bring about results if we tap into what the text tells us to do. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4, the text says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Now, in verse four, it starts out with, you know, God talking to uh, the children of Israel and God is disciplining Israel because of their rebellion. And because they were rebellious against him, they would, they would not do what he instructed them to do. God allowed them to be carried off into exile uh, into Babylon because uh, of their um, a refusal to follow his instructions. Now, they're in a place where they don't want to be. And how many know that it's a terrible thing to be in a place where you don't want to be? And some of us tonight, we are in a place spiritually where we don't want to be. We're in a place where we are confused. We're in a place where we feel like we're stuck. We're in a place where we feel like we're not um, constructive. Uh, we're in a place where we feel that we're not uh, accomplishing anything. And we're there because we have not um, put forth um, the right effort to find out what it is God would have us to do. Now, but I want you to notice something here uh, in Jeremiah. See, the, the whole book of Jeremiah is written about bad things and what's, what's going to happen and how things are going to come to pass. And... Uh, it's not a book that you, you want to read if you are um, depressed or if you're going through something. Jeremiah is not the place you want to be uh, reading. Uh, you might want to go back to Psalms if you're feeling a little down or what have you. Jeremiah was called the, the weeping prophet, and he was called the weeping prophet because he was always giving bad news. He was always talking about bad things to come. But I want you to see something here in uh, Jeremiah 29, right in this bad chapter <laughs> where God's telling them he's taking them away to Babylon. He's not allowing them to go into exile because of their rebellion. Right in the middle of this bad chapter, if you would, there's an amazing verse. There's an incredible verse here that not only applies to the children of Israel then, it applies to us tonight. And that's in verse 11. And most of us, if not all of us, have heard this verse. And I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. It says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. This is a great verse because God is telling the children of Israel, even though I allowed you to go into captivity, even though I allowed you to go into exile, into Babylon because of your, your, your rebellion and because of your um, 
uh, disagreement towards me, he says, I still have a incredible future for you. <laughs> I still have things I need for you to do and want for you to do for me in this earth. And God's saying the same thing to us tonight. He has a great future for us. He has a plan for us. And it doesn't matter how challenging things may seem tonight and how awful you may think things are going in your life. God is saying, you know, tomorrow can be better. Tomorrow can be a great day for you if you tap into my plan, if you tap into my purpose for you. And some of us tonight, we really need to know God's purpose. We're struggling. Some of us tonight are really struggling. We're struggling in the area of finances. We're struggling in the area of our relationships. We're struggling in the area of our jobs. We're just struggling in life. And God did not, he didn't mean for life to rule over you. He did not mean for life to uh, be a burden to you. God wants you to live the abundant life. And he says, you know, I, I, I created you for purpose. I created you with a plan in mind. I didn't create you to be depressed day in and day out, day out and try to figure out how to pay bills and, and fight and, and bump heads with uh, your spouse and your children. He said, I didn't create you. I didn't create you for that. I created you to have the abundant life. And God is saying, if you tap into my plan, if you tap into my purpose, you'll see that in my purpose and in my plan, there is joy, there is happiness, there's peace, and there is an abundance of life there for you. He says here, in, again in verse 11, God says, I have a plan for you. I have hope for your future. God is saying in essence to, to Israel and to us tonight, he says, I can turn this around. I can turn your current situation around if you tap into my purpose and to my plan that I have for you. God has a plan for you tonight with your name on it. He has a plan for your spouse tonight with their name on it. He has a plan for your children. Even though your children seem to be making bad uh, life choices, God is saying, I still have a plan for them. God has a plan for everyone under your roof. The question is, how do we tap into that plan and what do we do while we waiting on that plan to come to pass in our lives? And, um, you know, I, I met a lot of people and talked to a lot of people and they, you know, I'm, you know, what are you going to do for God? I don't know what God called me to do. I don't know my purpose. I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what I should be doing. And I'm going to share with you right now what God says we should, what we should be doing until we come into the understanding of his purpose and come into the understanding of the plan that he has for us. He tells us here in verse five through verse seven, in verse five, the NIV translation, he says, build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. Verse seven, he says, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. In other words, he's talking to the children of Israel and he's talking to us tonight. In other words, what he's saying is while you're waiting for God to bring you into that plan or bring you into that purpose, he says, you make sure right in the midst of your situation that you're trying to help somebody else in their situation. In other words, don't sit around and mope and, 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 and feel depressed about your situation. He says, right in the midst of your situation, right in the midst of what's going on in your life tonight, he says, you reach out and find somebody else to help in their situation. Don't spend all your time talking about how bad things are in your life. And here's where a lot of us are struggling tonight because we're spending too much time bad-mouthing our own current situations. Okay, grant you, your situation is not as favorable to you as you would like. Grant you, you have issues in your life that are not pleasing, okay. But don't sit around and spend all your time all your uh, waking day complaining about how awful the marriage is, how awful the wife is, how awful the husband is, how awful the finances are, or how terrible the kids are acting. Don't, don't spend all your time doing that. He says, in essence, get busy being a blessing. This is what he's telling the children of Israel to do. He's telling them, you know, 
Go out there, marry your children, marry your daughters, uh, build houses, uh, grow your vineyard. In essence, you know, prosper the city. He says, if the city prospers, you're going to prosper. What is he saying? He's saying, get busy being a blessing. While you're waiting on your purpose, while you're waiting to tap into what it is God's called you to do, he says, be a blessing. Be a blessing. Don't spend all your time wishing things were different for you. The reality is all of us are wishing things were different in some fashion or form. But you can't allow your, your life to pass by complaining about your, your state. He says, no, get busy being a blessing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, the, the text says this. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He says, in everything give thanks. We ought to give thanks in everything. Now, you're not giving thanks for everything, but you're giving thanks in everything. In every situation, every circumstance, give thanks. When it's, things are going well, give thanks. When things are not going so well, give thanks. Every situation, you ought to find a reason to give God some praise. Now, this is challenging, especially when things are very difficult, especially when things are not working in your, in your favor, especially when you can feel the pain and the disappointment and the frustration of life right there where you live it. But he says, in spite of all that, he says, find something in your life where you can give God some praise for. You said, but Pastor, Doug, you, you don't understand how bad things are. Well, I, I can tell you this. If you're still breathing, if you're watching this teaching tonight, that is enough to give God some praise. That is enough to say, Lord, I thank you that you allow me to see another day. I thank you, Lord, that you put breath in my lungs. He says, it's in him that we live and move and have our being. If it wasn't for Christ, we would not be. So find and bring yourself to a place where you can say, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. I thank you, Father. Thank you. And I thank you, Lord, that you love me enough that you're not going to leave me where I am. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for me. I thank you, Lord, that you have purpose for me. Now, he tells us how we discover, discover the plan that he has for us. He tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29, then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. He says in verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Verse 14, he says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Now, again, he's talking to the children of Israel that he allowed to go into Babylon because of their rebellion. But he tells them, he says, if you call up on me and pray to me, he says, I will listen to you. He's talking to the children of Israel. He says, I know you are in a tough place. I know you are in captivity. I allowed it to happen because you would not listen. You would not follow my instructions. He says, but if you call up on me, if you pray to me, he says, I'll listen. And some of you tonight need to understand that you are in a, a tight spot or you're in that place because for whatever reason, you've gotten away from the word of God. You have strayed away from the teachings of God or you just simply have been doing things your way. And God is saying right where you are, right in the middle of that pain, right in the middle of that frustration. He says, call up on me. He says, pray to me. He says, and I'll listen. He says in verse 13, he says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He says, when you seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. Now let's stop right there for a moment because some of us are saying, you know what? I've been seeking God. I've been praying and asking God to do something in my situation and God has not responded. And I've been praying for a long time. God just has not done anything yet. But he says here, if you seek me, you'll find me. But he makes it very clear, if you seek me with all of your heart. Now, what does that mean? He's saying, if you come after me with all of your heart, in other words, if you don't have a divided heart about serving me, if your heart is not divided in, in parts whereby you have a piece of your heart on, on your career, you have a piece of your heart over here in uh, this area of your life. He says, if you 
give me 100 percent devotion of 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 your heart and you seek me with everything you have he says you're going to find me now grant you i believe some of us have been seeking god but i think the problem is is that we have not been seeking him with our whole heart and when you seek him with your whole heart it means that you know what everything else is going to take second place i'm going after god with everything within me in other words it's intentional I'm seeking him intentionally. I'm turning off the television. I, I, I'm not uh, hanging out just to hang out. I'm not skipping my prayer time. I'm not skipping my devotional time. I'm not skipping uh, reading the word. No, this is intentional. I'm going after him. It's an intentional uh, 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 process that I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, 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 I'm tapped into here. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He said, when you come after me with everything you have, he says, you're going to find me. He says in verse 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. He says, and talking to the children of Israel and talking to us tonight, he says, I will be found by you and I will bring you back from exile. He says, in essence, you will find me and I'll bring you back out of that place where you don't want to be. He says, again, call me, pray to me, seek me, you'll find me, search for me with all of your heart. Those are the instructions right there. This is how we tap into the purposes of God, and this is how we find out God's plan for our life. And that is, we have to, we have to want it. We have to want it. We, we have to want, we have to want to know the plan of God over and beyond anything else. That means we have to go after it. We have to spend time uh, going into the word of God and spending time in prayer, listening to God, for God to talk to us and speak to us about our purpose in life. He says, if you do this, you will find me. Now, understand this. You will not discover God's purpose or God's plan for your life in a book. So many Christians are reading so many different books, Christian books and all these other types of books. And, and that's fine. I'm not against reading books. I'm an avid reader myself. But I dare say you, you can't spend, spend more time in a book than you can or should you in the word of God, because it is the word of God where you're going to find your purpose. It's not going to, you're not going to find your purpose in a book written by some Christian author, nor are you going to find your purpose in a program or at a conference. Now, programs are good. You can go to conferences that are good. The conferences are fine. I'm just simply saying that we can't put more time into conferences and programs and books written by man than we should in the Bible, because it's in the word of God that God's going to speak to us. It's in the word of God that God's going to bring us enlightenment and revelation about his, our purpose and what he's called us to do. You discover your plan and you discover your purpose in God through relationship. And by reading the word of God, see, the word of God is the mind of God. And when you read the word of God, you tap into the mind of God. And you start understanding who God is. You start understanding his character. You start understanding the different facets of God. And this is where you start coming into a relationship with God because you're spending time with him. And you're starting to understand his ways and why he does what he does. It's through relationship. It's through relationship that you're going to understand why you're here. It's through relationship that you're going to understand what God's called you to do. It's through relationship. And relationships, healthy relationships, take time. Will you spend time with each other? Will you spend time communicating and talking and sharing? Will you can understand the heart of each other? And God has said, I want you to come. I want you to spend time with me so you can understand my heart so you can understand my ways. And when you understand my heart and understand my ways, you'll understand why I created you. You'll understand what your purpose is in the earth. 
He says in verse 14, which is key, he says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. This is a key verse right here. He says, I will bring you back to a place you're supposed to be. When you seek me with your whole heart, I will bring you back to a place where you are supposed to be. Now, listen, there is a place for you that God has ordained. There's a place where you are supposed to be right now, spiritually, in God, in your life. And some of us are not in that place. This is why we're not happy. This is why we're not happy with church. This is why we're not happy in our relationships. This is why we're not happy on our jobs. This is why we're just not happy in life. This is why we just kind of feel unfulfilled. And the reason we're feeling unfulfilled, you're feeling unfulfilled, is because you have not come into that place where you're supposed to be in God, spiritually. Attending church, reading a, a scripture every now and then, and praying every now and then, is not going to get you to that place where you're supposed to be. He says, you've got to come after me with everything you've got. He says, seek me with your whole heart. He says, when you come out to me with everything that you have, he says, you will find me. God says, seek me, and I'll bring you to that place where you're supposed to be in life. And some of us tonight are not in that spiritual place where we're supposed to be. And God wants you to be in that place. And you know, we can blame it on the church. We can say, well, you know, it's the church. We can say it's the pastor. He ain't teaching nothing. It's the church. Church people get on my nerves. They're so messy. Or we can say, you know, it's the culture. Or, you know, we can blame it on a lot of things. We can blame it on our spouse because they won't let us do what we want to do. Or We can blame it on a lot of things. But the bottom line is this. And that is you're not happy spiritually because you're not in that place where you're supposed to be. And you're not in that place where you're supposed to be because you're not going after God with your whole heart. God said, you gotta come after me. You gotta come after me. He said, when you come after me with your whole heart, he says, I will bring you back to that place where, you, where you're supposed to be spiritually. And so what does that mean? As I get very close to that, it simply means don't allow yourself to be too busy for God. Some of us are we're just busy. We're just busy, just busy, just, just busy. We, full, we have filled our calendar up with uh, all kind of stuff. I mean, we, we, we're busy, you know, on, on prayer lines and, 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 and busy uh, doing uh, Bible teachings. We're, we're busy going to work. We're busy, you know, trying to make money. We're busy doing this and busy doing that. And God is saying, that's fine, but you still have not sat at my feet. And don't forget the story about Martha and Mary. Don't forget the story. It's in the gospel for a reason. Martha goes to Jesus, you know the story, and says, you know, bid Mary to help me in the kitchen. And Jesus says, Martha, you, you're, you're busy, you're cumbersome about many things, but M Mary has chosen the good part. And what Jesus was saying to Martha was, you know, you're, you're busy, you're just busy. Just busy with busy stuff. And that's fine, but Martha, Mary has chosen the good part, and that is she has chosen to set at my feet. And some of us tonight, we need to reevaluate our schedules, we need to reevaluate re our lives and, 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 and see and be honest with ourselves. Am, have I allowed myself to be too busy where I'm not sitting at the feet of Jesus? Have I allowed myself to get distracted? Some of us, we, we, we get so distracted. You know, social media. Um, you know, my kids, they laugh at me. They think I'm an old dinosaur because I really don't um, get involved in the social, social media stuff. I know how to do some of it, uh, not all of it, but some of it. And I, I will and I can when I feel the need to. But I don't feel the need to have to, you know, tap into social media every day, or every hour on the hour. I just, to me, it's a distraction. It's a, just a distraction from life. It takes time to, 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 to do social media. There's times, you know, I'm studying, I, I start looking at stuff, the next thing I know, I'm looking at this, and the next thing I know, I, I'm pulled over here. And after a while, I, I stop myself, wait a minute, I don't spend two hours allowing myself to 
go from one article to the next article, from one uh, thing to the next thing. I allow myself to get distracted. I'm like, that's two hours of my life that I can't get back. And so I've made a decision to put boundaries on my life, boundaries on my time, where I just don't let certain things just tap into the limited time that I have. And you need to think about tonight about setting boundaries over your life and over your time, because life is time. And some of us, we, we get so distracted and we get so overloaded. We just overloaded. I mean, we don't know how to say no to anybody. Somebody asks us to do something, yeah, I'll do it. Even though you know you don't have time to do it, even though you know you don't really want to do it, even though you're thinking to yourself, how come they can't find somebody else to do it? But the first thing out of your mouth is, I do it. And you're overloaded. And so now you're distracted, you're overloaded, you're, you're just busy. And God is saying, you know what? Come to me. Give me more time than what you have allotted. And that, that right there, I think, will help a lot of us tonight when it comes to really tapping into God's purpose and his plan for our life. And that is, we need to give God a little bit more time. And we need to give God a little bit more of us. We need to, you know, uh, 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 let go of some things and, and a lot more time to God um, and uh, spend more time in his presence so he can talk to us, so he can minister to us. So we can find that, that, that divine place where we're supposed to be. It's not church. Church is a building. Church is a, a, a physical location that you come and gather in the presence of God and other believers to give God praise and honor and, and glory. It's just a physical building. And some of you say, I, I just, I'm not happy with church. You're, not, you know, that, you're supposed to be happy in your relationship, not a building, not a physical location. And so if you're not happy spiritually, if, you, if you're struggling spiritually, if you're not walking in that divine place that God's called you, it's because of your relationship with your God. He told Israel, like he's telling us tonight, he says, if you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Jesus, he puts it very, in a very simple way that we can understand it. Jesus says the same thing in Matthew chapter 11, as I get ready to close out. Jesus, he, he, he makes it this plain. He's just, that's what I love about Jesus, excellent teacher. He just made it real plain for the disciples so they could understand. And he's making it real plain for us to understand tonight when, it talks, when we're talking about tapping into the purposes of God. He says in Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, for all of those of you who are weary and burdened, he says, come, and you'll find rest. But then he says in verse 19, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. When you take a yoke, you yoke it up. They use a yoke to yoke a young ox to an older ox so the young ox can learn from the older ox. Jesus said, yoke yourself up with me so you can learn. Hook up with me, and I'll teach you. He says, I'll give you rest for your souls. He says, take my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And oftentimes we read that verse and we think, well, you know, when you're down and out, that's, that's not really what he's saying. He's simply saying that when you are feeling heavy in heart, when you are feeling uh, sick spiritually, when you know that you're not in that place where, you, where you're supposed to be in God, or when you feel like you're in that place that's not quite right, when you know that you're not where you're supposed to be spiritually. Jesus said, listen, come. Yoke up with me. Learn of me. I'll teach you. I'll show you. And some of you tonight, if you don't know God's plan for your life, if you don't know God's purpose for your life, then you are, you know, you're heavy, you're heavy, you're heavy, you're heavy burdened spiritually. 
because you're not in that place where you're supposed to be. Jesus makes it very clear. He says, come, yoke up with me. Now, let me give you three things that I think can help you uh, as I close this out. Uh, if, if you're feeling that you still have not tapped into God's purpose in your life, if, you, if you're feeling that you really don't understand God's plan for your life. Now, I, I recognize some of you do. I recognize some of you, you, you know your purpose, you know your plan, you know God's plan for your life, and you're running in it. You're, you're good. Some of you, I, I know, you're good. But it's too many of us who are not good. And if you're one of those who's saying, you know, I'm still kind of struggling to understand my purpose. I'm still kind of struggling to understand what God has really called me to do, His divine plan for my life. Let me give you three things that I think will help you. Why, why are you uh, come into that understanding? Uh, the first thing is this, and it's very simple, and that is, you know, maintain a prayer life. Maintain a prayer and devotional life. Not just, I pray when I get a chance. Not just pray in the car on your way to work. Not just five minutes before you go to bed. No, develop a prayer life. Develop a devotional time where you have a set time that you give God at least 15, 20 minutes of your time a day, if not longer. But at least 15 minutes. Everybody can give God 15 minutes. I mean, we, we give our friends 15 minutes just, just texting. So I know you can give God at least 15 minutes because you need wisdom and you need direction. And the only way to get wisdom and get direction is to spend time in the presence of God in His Word doing a devotional time, doing, uh, having devotional time. If, I guess is the best way to say that. And then, you know, the second thing is this, find some place within the body of Christ, within the church, where you can get back, where you can serve. So many of us, we're so used to hearing sermons, but we don't get back. We don't give of ourselves. We're not doing anything to, to help anybody else. Find somewhere where you can serve somebody else. You've got to get back. You, you have to be able to get back. Some of you don't feel good about yourself. You don't feel good about uh, your walk with God because you're not, you, 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 you haven't allowed yourself to, to be used of God. You haven't allowed God to use you to bless somebody else. It, it doesn't have to be any great things. You know, it, what you call a great thing. It could be something simple. Just, you know, helping somebody get to church or ministering in the children's ministry or helping the teenagers or ushering or, you know, find something in the church to do. Or outside of church, go to a nursing home or, you know, work at the food pantry or just somebody, some elderly person in your neighborhood or whatever, just find somebody that you can bless with your time. It doesn't have to be your money, with your time. Reach out, come out of yourself and help somebody. Somebody needs your gift. Somebody needs, to, needs your, your understanding of scripture. Somebody needs your kind word. Somebody needs your prayer. You know how to pray. You know how to encourage people. You, 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 somebody needs that. Somebody needs it. Somebody close to you, somebody near where you are right now needs what you have. And you gotta give of yourself. You gotta come out of yourself and let God be a blessing to others through you. And then the last thing is this, as we close, and that is uh, become passionate again about the house of God. Become passionate once again about spiritual things. Don't allow spiritual things, don't allow the things of God just to slip through your hands and just don't just take God's stuff for granted. Don't just take spiritual things for granted. It is a blessing that we have the Word of God. It is a blessing that we have spiritual gifts. It is a blessing that we have the anointing of God and the giftings of God. It is a blessing, a true blessing, to be able to have these things tangible in our lives. Become passionate again about who you are in Christ Jesus. Don't allow people and, and situations to steal your identity in Christ. Come back to that place where you're proud to be a believer, where you're proud to be associated with the body of Christ, where you have no, no reservation about you know, who you are as a child 
of God. You know, become passionate again about uh, 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 sharing the gospel, ministering to other people, trying to get people saved, trying to get people understanding about Jesus and who he is as the son of God. Get your passion back. Hallelujah, get your passion back. Get your passion back. But God told Jeremiah, you tell the children of Israel, if they seek me with their whole heart, they will find me. And the reality is when you find God, you find the plan that God has for your life because the plan God has for your life and the purpose that God has for your life is with God. So when you find God, you find the plan. When you find God, you find your purpose. God has the plan. You don't have the plan. Your friend doesn't have the plan. Pastor doesn't have the plan. The prophet doesn't have the plan. It's not in a book. It's not at the conference. It's not on Christian television. No, it's with God. God said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. And when you find God, you'll find the plan that he has for your life. You'll find the purpose that he has for your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this evening for this opportunity just to, to share in your word. I pray, God, that your people will be encouraged tonight, God, that they will uh, once again, Father God, uh, have a desire, Lord, to come after you with their whole hearts, Father God, with a full understanding that when they find you, God, they find their purpose and they find their plan. Father, I pray that you will continue to strengthen them, that you will continue to keep them encouraged as they seek your faith, God. And I thank you, Father God, that you will continue to watch over them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that you will continue to bless their households and bless their children, God. And Father, we thank you for your divine protection over your people this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you this evening. It's time to uh, to honor the Lord with our, our resources. Giving is a part of the worship service. And so I want you to go ahead and get your, uh, your tithes and offerings prepared. You pray, ask the Lord what he would have you to do. And um, you trust the voice of God and obey the voice of God. And God will give you instructions on what to give, amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall man give into your bosom. That's Luke chapter uh, 6, verse 38. He says, give, and it should be given unto you. Good men are pressed out, shaking together, and running over. Should men give into your bosom. Is what, the, is what the text says. Amen. On the screen, there's several ways for you to give. And whatever way um, uh, works for you, that's, uh, that's fine. Again, go ahead and pray. You ask the Lord what he would have you to do. And, and trust God. Trust him. Be obedient. And once you get your tithes and offerings prepared, if you would, please just reach him. Uh, towards heaven, and, and that's a sign of, of contact. Uh, and I'm gonna pray over him, amen. I'm gonna believe God for nothing less than a hundredfold uh, return to ABC that you sow into his work tonight, amen. Father, we just thank you for these tithes and offerings. We thank you, Father God, for uh, the people of God. We thank you for their obedience of sowing into your, your work, into your kingdom. And Father, we thank you for nothing less than a hundredfold return on their seed that's been released into your work this evening, Father. In this season, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, come out and see us Sunday morning at 8.30. We'd love for you to come and worship with us. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.